Aquaman is one of those characters where it's hard to get a read on which tier he belongs in because he has some interesting battle feats that suggest he's in those medium heavyweight tiers at least or one could say starfire strength levels. He's given Superman some scuffles in his fights which I'm going to show in this video in the Rebirth or New 52-ish era. DC's try act, trying to act like all that stuff is just the same now but yeah I'm just going to say the uh, Rebirth or New 52 era if that makes sense. But before I go any farther, thank you all so much that I've donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. Arthur Curry is the son of an Atlantean princess. Atlanta and the human lighthouse keeper Thomas Curry after being born and raised on land and taught to use his powers by Atlantis expert Dr. Shin. Arthur's father was accidentally killed by Black Manta leading Arthur on a long road to avenge his father's murder as well as accept his Atlantean heritage. Along the way he's formed the other's organization, joined the Justice League and gained and lost the title of King Atlantis multiple times and has earned his place as one of the most powerful metahumans on earth and for good reason. I mean this dude is the king of the sea and there's a lot of creatures that can survive deep underwater. That means he has to be above those creatures. You know what I mean? Or he rival those creatures, right? But let's get right into it. How strong is this era of Aquaman? Let's get it. Let's get into the light work showings of his strength. Like in this occasion, he stops Gigantus' foot, even though she looks to be hundreds of tons. And he says, nah, he's strong enough to take on Wonder Woman tier characters underwater. That's just something you don't want to do. It's implied that he's definitely like, if you have your doubts about him being Wonder Woman or Superman level on top of the land, underwater, one can definitely say it concretes him under the underwater. You know what I'm saying? There's the speeding boat. He stops. And lifts it with his raw strength. Of course, it has plenty of hydration. This creature, look what it's doing to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's like seems to be in agony. But even though this being was shown to give Wonder Woman some issues, he's still able to make this being's leg hurt in agony, making it yell and everything. Lifts the scavenger being off of him and launches him out the water in the process. Kind of like a battle feat, strength feat, being that's a lot bigger than him. Does this? Yeah, you don't want none of him. Especially with that trident on top of it. Yawn. He can do easy stuff like picks up a truck and toss it a few meters. This is light work to carry in his strength tier. He was able to break through some ice that was strong enough to hold characters like Mira, his sweetie pie. And he's able to lift his fire trolls, sling them around because he's freaking Aquaman and he's strong like that. He's able to lift enormous cruise ships out of water. Because he's strong like that. Never forget, there are cruise ships that can weigh up to hundreds of thousands of tons, by the way. Just in case you didn't know. Not only was he able to lift, but he was also able to smash a sub out of the water and just rip through it. He can lift it out of there first. And then, if he wants to, he can rip through it just with raw strength. Aquaman is strong enough in a battle feat in raw strength to stop a blow from the dead king with his raw strength. Keep in mind, this same power is capable of sinking the entirety of Atlantis. So for Aquaman to be able to do this with raw strength is actually quite impressive. Normal fish, y'all gotta learn y'all place. He's Aquaman for reasons. Two punches, two dead hammerhead sharks. He's gotten a scuffle with Hawkman before. A little slight. Even when he's young, he was able to send this boy flying and send, made him in a coma for a while. Missiles can do nothing to see the missiles hitting that. But when Aquaman decides to punch it, definitely does work. Yo, stupid mecha suit. Let me show you how strong I am. During this battle with the dead king, throws like some underwater cruise liner at him. Just strength. Striking power like during, you know, fighting these trench and stuff. He threw his trident hard enough to call a volcanic eruption. One of his more impressive feats is the fact that he can harm characters is that we're slinging soups around like mammoth his punches can do damage to him has to be somewhere in their range right and aquaman does have a lot of weird showings when like super soldier tears or something like gives him like some scuffle it's because he tends to go easy on him it stays here i tried to go easy on you so there's the reasoning for that night night i tried to make sure i wouldn't unintentionally injure someone vastly inferior to me this is why you see like lower tier characters like be able to tag him even though they shouldn't be able to react to him He's too fast combat speed wise realistically top tiers like swamp thing can give him some issues like the time he struggled to get out of these vines and couldn't really get free same with brainiac's tentacles but at the same time that's brainiac he does that to a lot of different leaguers it's like the writers have something against aquaman or they're just not paying attention like okay this is weird he can't punch something that's planet like to death right something that's big right but for some reason he still can Caused damage to a creature that was giving Wonder Woman some issues, but yet he's not planetary. You know, it's, it might be like one of those flash moments how they say he's only light speed, but he's really massively faster than light. You know what I mean? It could be like a pun thing. Who knows? I know one thing. He's definitely way above Super Soldier tier, no matter how you ask it. Like leagues above that, like punching things through trucks and stuff. Oh, yeah. Bullets, uh, just 
kind of don't do nothing. Oh yeah, check this out. He has like a little protection from his armor as well. Even on his skin, the bullets still bounce off too. So shotgun blast just pisses them all. He got impaled by the dead king's spear, but during, you know, the same battlefield that I keep going back to, he kept fighting afterwards though, showing some healing factor type stuff. Don't ever forget that killer croc breaks his teeth on him. <laughs> Being submerged in lava doesn't really seem to threaten him that much. He can stay conscious from Atlanta staff blast. He can withstand acid from all types of creatures. I mean, he's gotten plenty of battlefields with Black Manta, withstanding his lasers against Black Manta. He can survive being exposed to a vacuum, but he does have like little face mask on though. Here comes DC with this weird durability, even though he has way better durability feats than bullets, but he's looking like he's impairing from bullets here ever don't we? It's like stings, but he just punches them off. When it comes to raw speed, he can casually swim at 230 miles per hour. That's easy. He can jump really high, landing. I mean, he even intercepted a speeding truck just by jumping. An Atlantean sea crab cannot keep up with him too fast. He's evidently so fast to the point where he can swim to the four corners of Earth in an insanely short amount of time. Let this speak for itself. It stayed here, last location, the final corner of the Earth. So this is the final corner. He swam to another corner all around the same time frame. Fighting speed-wise, he definitely leaves above normal humans. Blitz them before they can even react, honestly. Takes out three criminals. Before they even know what's going on, catches a falling helicopter, strength feet. Look how his feet are engraved in the ground. He's fast enough to leap in front of something's fist before it crushes at Lana. Like you see how he's nowhere in this vicinity on the left, and then on the right, he's already there. This magma ish looking being Karaku's battling these trench monsters, punching them with raw power. These trenches are kind of annoying. Battlefield with Black Manta managed to deflect one of his attacks, one of his stingers, yet again, always deflecting. He moves in front of Mirror and let the bullets hit him, speed. One debatably said this is aim dodging, but he was able to dodge Black Manta's lasers, which are technically the speed of light, or lasers, right? Well, he did something similar, like being able to dodge a close range blast from Atlanta's staff. Let me explain the whole talking to fish thing. Aquaman explains it best. Aquaman talks to fish, everybody knows that. He says, fish don't talk. Their brains are too primitive to carry on a conversation. He says, I do this instead. I reach into their mid brains and telepathically pushed them to help me out. Squid, sharks, eels, it's all the same. Though dolphins are another story, giving giant creatures like this the business. And also, little fun fact about his abilities, he can locate his brain. He can even communicate with any animal that might have ancestors from the ocean or to the ocean, things like that. It states here, aquatic reptiles like alligators and crocodiles haven't changed much in the past million of years. He has some mental resistance. Frightened Chimera, able to break out of his mind probe, even though it's established that he's a more powerful mind. All this aquatic talk and stuff is kind of like a form of telepathy. He can summon like a buttload of creatures and aid. In battle, if he needs to, even if he's injured or getting towed up, they can come and help him. He always has help. He has the entire ocean. In this occasion, with Swamp Thing, he had some creatures eat, like literally eat him. What if I told you, even if you're half aquatic, he can still control you. So it'd be best for you not to be aquatic at all. He's basically your kryptonite. Literally communes with water. If you're about to be eaten by a sea monster, he can telepathically make you not get eaten by that sea monster. One of those crazy moments, man. Sea creatures can take on Green Lantern Construct. Pretty sure. They ain't normal to be able to do this. During this fight against the Red King, he summoned Topo, a very powerful being, helping him in this battle. He needed him to control him. He overexerted himself. That can actually put him in a coma. He can see normally, even underwater, where it's just complete darkness. Compared his hearing to that of Superman, he's able to hear military drones in the midst of gunfire. He's had several weapons over the years, one of them being the Trident of Neptune. Talking about some overpowered standard gear, it's strong enough to stab Darkseid's freaking eye. Does this to Graves' eyes, something that even Superman's heat vision wasn't capable of melting. This states here that ice must be magic. By the way, yep, he has electrokinesis on top of all this. And his trident can even resist magical blasts from Morgan Le Fay. To this fight yet again, throws the trident through the skull. It can even blast through Legend's armor, which was eating Vostok's fire. The Trident of Neptune can even open the magical gates. Later on, Arthur gained this trident known as the Trident of Poseidon. He lost his main trident in the invasion of Thor, Ark, and etc. This one is a bit more versatile. It states here, great gifts have been bestowed upon me. Ancient powers, control over the storm, control over the wind and rain, thunder and lightning. No, seriously, this one is awesome. Like, it can literally shrink into different glaives and things like that. That's cool. He can even call forth the element of ice with this as well. Like freezes a room full of folk. Teleportation. Evidently could teleport to other planets as long as it has water. It stays here. Thanks, Poseidon. You couldn't have mentioned the otherworldly travel. And it's also capable of electrokinesis, obviously. It's resistant to magic. It stays here. Poseidon's blessings. They offer protection from Thor's magic. You know the Kryptonian god Ra? It's somehow able to pierce him. 
Dude, what the heck? This guy was giving Superman the business, but that's none of my business, though. Do me a favor and don't fight him near a beach side or ocean side. He can summon a massive amount of water. Just don't do it to yourself. Aquaman ended up having to empty the power or all the blessings of the Poseidon's trident into Thor's water to poison the entire dimension enough to where Earth Prime can harmlessly absorb it. It states here, Arthur, what is happening? I poured all of Poseidon's magic, all of his blessings into Wellspring. In the same way they were trying to poison our world, with the Bane Fields, I poisoned theirs. They were going to consume our world, but I made the sacrifice, and now our world will consume Thor, Mira. But something else happened to where he got empowered by magic after Aquaman ended up regaining his trident during Raph's rule. This dude can literally channel the raw magical energies released by many of Raph's weapons through it. Whenever he uses this power, his eyes pretty much glow yellow. He can create force fields. He's capable of blocking magical attacks. Gives him high magical resistance. He destroyed the power source of the crown of Thorn, a dome that powered all of Atlantis. Gotta love it. And of course, he has to save Mira by swimming to the surface really quick to save Mira in this particular situation. Beating up several sea demons because he can. He fought this being known as Wrath, stabs him through the eye with this trident. Gotta respect it. Never forget that this being was strong enough to break the trident earlier, so that's no easy feat, by the way. He's capable of speaking Samoan, by the way. You gotta respect Aquaman if they say this. They say he's the most dangerous of the Justice League. Take this like a grain of salt, though, but, you know, he's gotta be pretty comparable. I mean, America loves Aquaman, right? Don't ask, but Martian Manhunter split his personality into different beings and erased their memories so they didn't know there was even Martian Manhunter. Uh, one of them was like a female and one of them found Aquaman attractive. Like what? Now, I feel like you got a good idea if his battle feats are flash being most of the time, Gride. But in this case, he didn't, he didn't have all his powers. He kind of completely curb stomped the Grodd in this situation. Combo. One of Aquaman's most impressive feats, which could debatably say he has superman in his tier strength, is the fact he slugged out with Hercules. Yeah, I never thought I would see Hercules even, like, really do any appearances in DC, right? Believe it or not, it's a drawn-out panel. Kind of like a legit extended slugfest. Both trading blows with one another. Even puts a vice grip on him and everything. Picks him up. It stays here. Mighty Hercules. That's right. Throws him here and etc. Man, the fight extends even more, even longer. On dry land, might I add. Man. Even though I gotta admit, it does look like Hercules has the advantage on dry land, but as soon as he tries to drown him, Hercules doesn't know better. <laughs> Putting him underwater was a bad decision and punches him out of the water. Then the fight kind of continues underwater, using sea life on top of his strength underwater by itself. It states here, fighting the Karakon seemed easy by comparison. Got the got W on uh, Hercules in DC? Doesn't Shazam have like Superman tier strength and the reason why he has that type of strength is because of Hercules is empowering him but yet Aquaman was able to fight Hercules pretty well even though it was a better fight underwater and Aquaman's favor underwater right? I'm just gonna let y'all think on that for a second. Not trying to jump to conclusions or anything. Plenty of fights with Black Manta, of course, getting a W right here. You already know this is going to be a pattern. A whole bunch of folk with him fighting Black Manta. In the process, elbow, kick, reacting to lasers. Black Manta should not be disrespected, though. Helmet off and everything. He can fight a bunch of Atlanteans with Mira at the same time. Battle feet versus a whole bunch of Atlanteans and Tempest. Respect it. Of course, Thugs ain't ready for Aquaman, even if he is dried out. Of course, he had his battles with Ocean Master, being that's comparable to him in raw power. Yep. This guy is pretty top tier in his own right. Respect it. Look what he did to his helmet. Yeah, he's Aquaman after all. Remember what Orm did, aka Ocean Master did to Superman, Wonder Woman before. One can say, okay, maybe this did this to Superman because of magic. But what's the excuse for Wonder Woman though? Like Wonder Woman tears getting like incapacitated by Orm is something to be respected. I'm just saying. He even got in a scuffle with Supes, even though I believe Supes was holding back, but she can you hold back durability though? Gotta respect it. Love the strength in the scuffle. Ha. <laughs> I don't even have to bring up what Superman can do. You can watch my other past Superman videos for that to know why this is impressive. I mean, we're talking about a guy that can literally stand in solar system shattering impacts, like just standing in black holes. Stuff we've seen Superman do. How much comic proof do we need to get his respect? I remember that one time he was possessed and he was slugged it out with Wonder Woman. Um, guys, why is Aquaman so strong when people be sleeping on him? Headlock and everything. It's another recent issue, my guys. He got in a slugfest again in recent stuff with Wonder Woman. What the heck? Respect Aquaman. Aquaman himself and Mira got in a fight with Martian the Manhunter. I mean, you people gonna learn to respect Aquaman and just Atlanteans in general. Even though he kind of was fighting them all off. Martian Manhunter was kind of beasting right here. 
Landing blows on John Jones here, Aquaman getting punched here, and boy oh boy. In relatively recent stuff, Aquaman kind of revealed that he does actually have raw fighting skills. Like stating here that he does live with Batman and he's learned a few tricks. He is implied to have swordsmanship as well. Bruh. Oh yeah, in case I didn't make it clear, he doesn't have the trident of Neptune no more. It was just like one of those things for the arc, but then he got this other trident back. You know, stuff like that. To feat fighting Hercules, even if it is underwater, it's just a ridiculous testament of his power. Best way to get an idea of Hercules is to see how much of a scuffle Shazam can give Superman, considering that he has the strength of Hercules. Talk about some more temporary equipment they have. It was not permanent standard gear, but he got this armor during his final battle with the Dark Knights and Barbado. Aquaman and the other members received received armor made from the element of creation itself the 10th metal enables the changing and reshaping of all reality using the element x armor all of arthur's natural powers were greatly bolstered it also brings the wearer's thoughts and desires into reality and look how epic he looks in this armor <laughs> respect it the whole league baby the real weakness to aquaman is the writers don't know what the heck they want to do with him they, they don't know how to make up their mind with him do bullets hurt him do they not hurt him you know that's the real thing a lot of that could be explained with oh certain power levels he's at because he might be at a certain level of dehydration that could be the excuse i guess right i mean he fought wonder woman on too many slug fest even in recent stuff even in rebirth like dark knight event type stuff the dark knight metal event and stuff i mean make up your mind dc he was able to fight king orm a being that was able to incapacitate wonder woman there was even one point where he got empowered by poseidon i mean he's even fought martian manhunter respect them but the main feat that makes me respect aquaman the most is being able to just get in a full-blown panel for panel slug fest with the god of strength tier characters wonder woman tier characters like hercules it's hard for me to not respect him if he can do freaking do this guys i'm just I'm sorry. I just look at battle feats are an important aspect to me. Don't judge me. And the reason why is because you already know. It's mainly because of the Shazam scaling. You already know why Shazam is strong. Strength of Hercules, stamina of Atlas, power of Zeus. Aquaman literally fought Hercules. What more do I say? He has to be way past the planetary ranges when it comes to just being able to punch with a certain level of force to even be able to be on these guys' physical strength level compared to what they can do. I mean, Shazam is always Superman to you, no matter what continuity. You know what I mean? But that could be just me overreaching. What do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this presentation of Aquaman? Do you know he was this strong? Where do you think he belongs at? Where do you think he's safe? Do you think he's safe in the Wonder Woman tiers? I feel like it's safe to say he's Wonder Woman, Superman tiers when he's completely submerged underwater. I feel like that's the safest way to say it. But then it's still weird, you know? It seemed like, logically speaking, he would be at his best then. But then outside on dry land, I feel like he'd probably be in the medium powerhouse tiers. Not necessarily Superman tier, but he ain't necessarily a flea in comparison. You know what I mean? It's just weird to look at it. Blame the writers. They don't really know what they want to do with Aquaman's power levels. But yeah, post your comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Check out those playlists so you can see more stuff like this and respect Aquaman.